Hi, welcome to Borsini Burr Gallery. I'm Michael Parks. And since I'm having a one-man show here now, I thought it would be a good idea to show you some of the work I've done this year, and at the same time, you get a chance to see the gallery. So since I know you've seen some of the sculpture from the outside just a minute ago, let's take a look at how that happened and how this whole year for me turned into a year about sculpture. This is the stone lithograph that the client saw and said to Diane Borsini Burr, I would like to have a large sculpture. I like this image. Let's see if we can do that. When Diane told me about uh, the idea of doing a life-size sculpture of this piece, I said, this is a two-dimensional design graphic. It is not very sculptural. I'm not sure this can be done. But I thought, okay, we can give it a try and see what happens. And if it looks good in the small mannequins, then we go forward and we try to make a larger piece. So taking this as an idea, we went to smaller pieces, working with different patinas to see if sculpturally, this is exciting enough to go to a large size. You can see here, we're working with uh, different patinas, a little more blue in the wing, and the cat, who became known as Bella, because everyone seemed to love her in the, uh, in the foundry, um, is a dark blue here and a beige here. Finally, the client settled on the beige tones, and this is what you saw outside. But what happened with Bella is because she was finished first, every time people came up the stairs to see us working on the clay model, they would do this with the head. And of course, what happened was, since she was in clay, we had to repair the nose, the head, repeated times. So the end result was we thought Bella might work very well on her own. And not to be sure which color, we did two, just to, uh, to see what would happen. This is Bella in beige. And in a few minutes, we'll go inside and you'll see Bella blue. But the fact that so many people were attracted to her gave us a sense that we were developing a, a role of let's make some sculptures. Now, what happened is to pull together a team to make this piece, spend some time in the foundry, we thought, why not try to make some smaller pieces at the same time? And this is exactly what we did. We built some of the smaller models, and normally it takes about six months from the time you build the model till you see a finished bronze. The team we put together, we reduced that time to three months. We did the large piece, and I will show you as we go in the next room, several small pieces. So the year that started out for me being a year of painting and drawings ended up being a year of less painting and drawings and more sculpture. So come on in and take a look at the small pieces. I thought if I'm going to start sculpture again after 10 years, I wanted to do something new and uh, bring the whole feeling of my work into a more modern space. And so the first thing that I did was to work on the patinas. And instead of the, the brown Florentine patina, which I'd always used in the past, we went for something completely different. You can see the blue on the monkey, very much like the blue Bella, the blue in the wings, and then the, the light skin tones here with a little bit of red in the hair it takes on a much more contemporary flair, and considering this is a bit, a bit cheeky, a bit tongue-in-cheek, uh, it seemed to work really, really well. And so we continued this type of patina onto the other pieces, which uh, I will show you in, uh, in just a minute. Okay, this is the second of the small pieces that we were working on. Keep in mind, we're working on all of these simultaneously. So you sort of get lost in focusing on one, and you kind of have an idea, then you bounce off to the next one. So this, this concept was um, either going to be tremendously successful or a total disaster in my mind, and that is she represents night. So you had to have a kind of a blue tone to her, and then the gold moon and the north star in the wing. It sounded great. But until I actually saw the patina and saw it working together, I had no idea if it was going to be successful or not. But I honestly think, in the end, she looks like night to me. Okay. 
The third sculpture miniature that um, we worked on during this time period was a reference back to a stone lithograph that I did some 20 years ago uh, because when I did the stone lithograph, I thought, you know, that would make a great sculpture. And uh, I have a little sculpture sketchbook of that period, and I made a sketch of this, more or less this way. And it's, it took that long to actually bring it to, uh, to a full resolution as a piece. But I think you can see that sculpturally, it's quite effective. And again, the new patinas seem to hold up very, very well with uh, a more classical looking image. And uh, hopefully next year, there's gonna be three or four more and they'll just get better and better. So like I said, this room is a bit special. And as you can see, it is full of drawings on vellum. The difference is that these drawings have been printed on vellum. And we have spent a great deal of time doing something that is quite difficult to do, but I think we finally accomplished it. The drawings on vellum have a soft quality, a kind of almost ghost-like quality. When you print that image on paper, you get the image, but you don't get that subtle softness. So we spent a great deal of time working to the idea that we were going to make the prints on vellum on vellum to give you the same feeling that you would have with the originals. And this room, this entire room, are prints done on vellum, and they all have this wonderful, gentle, soft quality that you get from the originals. But, there's one other thing that it has. Look at this. Because it's vellum, because it's translucent, it can be lit from behind. And again, a great deal of time and energy has been spent to try to find something that will illuminate this evenly and give it the softness, but not affect the image. And I think we've accomplished that as well. And the end result, as you can see, is quite dramatic. The wonderful thing about this gallery is not only do you have multiple rooms to show the work, but in this particular case, something that I spent 25 years doing, and that is making stone lithographs. I have the largest selection of framed stone lithographs on the wall here, so I can see kind of the history in motion of all the things that I've done. And as you can see, and I'm going to walk right along, these pieces ranging from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, to the very earliest pieces and all together so you can see the range of work uh, and what happened over that period of time. I no longer do stone lithographs because the printers um, retired and they were the best in the world and there are no more printers, but the representation of this time and the work is here, as you can see. The exciting new things, the sculpture, the vellums, um, and the vellums on paper, and the vellums on, on, on vellum with light, all of those things are new and exciting, but this is where it all started. These are um, uh, high quality gicle prints of my paintings. And of course they go back uh, 25, 30 years, or recently as a year ago. And for many, many people, of all the new things that we're talking about, the stone lithographs that have been around for a while, it is the paintings in the end that makes my work separate from all the other artists. And so I just want to say, these prints are here and they're also available for those people that want to have the, that sense of a painting on the wall as opposed to a drawing on the wall or a print on the wall. Just the printer that prints these and believe me, they are extremely high quality, uh, the best that I know of in terms of uh, gicle printing, is the same printer that is printing for me the vellums. He is the same designer that designed my books, and he's been a friend for 20 plus years. So 
at my age and my experience, the one thing that I've found is if you have good people, you bring them with you and you keep that relationship going. And so when we, because uh, with Marcel in Amsterdam, uh, we started printing Chiclet on canvas. And after that, the books, after that, the vellums, and who knows what's going to come next, but whatever comes next, he's the guy that's going to be printing it for me. Exactly the same thing that happened with the sculptures. I brought two people over from Italy that I had worked with 10 years ago because I wanted that sense of expertise and continuity in doing the sculptures. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you find good people, don't lose them. So, I've taken you through a quick tour of Barsini Burr Gallery and all of its various rooms uh, with the different uh, ingredients and a quick tour of the one-man show that I've had here this year. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and I hope that next year perhaps you'll come and take a look for yourselves. Thanks for coming.